My voice is the voice that guides you home safely each and every day. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I am the voice of the safest and most efficient airspace in the world. I have to be 100%, 100% of the time. I am. I am. I am. I am a professional air traffic controller. Thanks for joining us. Today's topic is explosive trace detection, which is commonly known in technology circles by its acronym ETD, and has been a longtime component of aviation security in the U.S. Travelers will recognize it as the swabs that are occasionally applied by TSA officers to their hands or bags for testing during the screening process, but it has also been deployed in the past in portals that have puffed air and, and sampled air from passengers as they move through uh, the screening process to detect explosive residue. Joining us in the studio today is Dr. Bill McCann. Uh, Dr. McGann is one of the original developers of commercial ion mobility spectrometry, spectrometry technology, easier uh, for you to say than, than me, but uh, that uh, long description essentially is, is the ETD technology that Dr. McGann was uh, key in developing uh, back in the 1990s. He's authored dozens of scientific publications and holds over 25 patents in the areas of nuclear, chemical, and biological detection technologies, and he's played a key role in creating an industry around this ETD technology science and uh, is a founder of Ion Track Instruments, which was uh, eventually acquired by General Electric and subsequently uh, at that company served as GE Securities Chief Technology Officer. Bill, thanks very much for joining us in the studio today. Thank you, Carter, and thanks for those kind words of introduction. So, um, appreciate that very much. It's great to be here. Yeah, so I stumbled uh, over the, the key component <laughs> right. of the uh, technology right. that you were so important in uh, developing back in the 90s, ion mobility spectrometry uh, technology. Yeah. Um, it's commonly known uh, by folks who have traveled through airports as that explosive trace uh, swabbing or, or other collection of residue that might lead um, those who are doing the screening to have concern that there could be some contact with explosives in the near future. Tell us a little bit uh, about the technology and, and uh, why it's important. You've, you've sure. followed it for the last sure. few years. Yeah, I mean, very briefly, uh, you know, Carter, explosive trace detection or ETDs systems as we know them today really emerged on the scene in the early 1990s in the aftermath of the Lockerbie mm -hmm. uh, Panem 103 disaster where a, a simple device, electronic item that had concealed plastic explosives took the plane down. And there were back then in, in that decade of the 90s, there were a few companies, mine included, that were working on uh, both developing technologies and fundamental science toward products working with the FAA at the time, who were the stakeholders and regulators who were developing standards to ensure that these products could in fact detect with the proper levels of efficiency, and as well as the airlines who were establishing the requirements for operational deployment. So over that period of short decade, if you will, these products emerged from the laboratory into the airports and finally culminated in a major deployment in the security equation where ETDs were became the workhorse mm -hmm. in that deployment after 9-11. So there's a number of different technologies that detect explosives and, and over the course of the last 10 years in particular since 9-11, we've seen a lot of different deployments, uh, some, sure. uh, many, you've been directly involved uh, in. Why is trace different and why is it important as a part of that mix of technologies to screen sure, for explosives? Sure, it's a great question. So if you go back to the concept of being the workhorse in the equation, the one thing that ETDs do that is unique in terms of all the security technologies deployed is it gives you a chemical identification of the potential threats. So as a result of that, however, they've in the equation have been relegated to what's referred to as secondary screening. And that means that the primary screening systems, which tend to be x-ray based, and they're looking at an image-based system, which they principally will identify a potential threat. And you know, to not get too much into the details, they're looking at the bulk properties of that material. Maybe it has too much density or mass density, 
If you get real fancy, it measures some things about the average atomic number. But none of those things in and of themselves suggest that it's really an explosive. Mm -hmm. So those primary screening devices very quickly render the flag up saying this could be of interest. ETD technology comes in, takes a sample, as you described, yeah. and does a very detailed chemical analysis in seconds to validate that this is a threat or not. So that's the place that it has been since those major deployments after 9-11. It's interesting to me, just having, uh, as an aside, uh, over the time watched these technologies evolve, the difference between chemistry and physics yes. and how they've applied it mm -hmm. uh, to solve this problem. Your um, company that you're engaged in right now is, is looking at taking it um, to the next level. And yes. so tell us a little bit about where the technology is now and why it might be different from what our viewers may remember from trace detection or, or may sure. most commonly be. Sure, well, well, candidly, Carter, I mean, ETD systems today haven't really gone through a revolution. They've been evolving mm -hmm. since their major deployment. And that's really important, however, because major engineering improvements toward the usability, the reliability, maintainability, has had some additional benefits in terms of cost of ownership. But also what's been changing in the space is that there have been important new targeted threats out there that are keep getting added to the, the threat detection list. And as those threats continue to grow at a faster rate, there's an opportunity for the technology to become revolutionized finally versus just evolving. Mm. And that's where a company like mine at Implant Sciences now, which is candidly uh, one of the reasons I came back to the industry, and it's great to be back in the aviation mm. security industry again with a new product about to you know, repeat what we did in the last generation. And our ideas are to take, you know, as a scientist and a technology kind of business guy, it, it's tempting to start there. But the reality is you need to start with understanding what the operational requirements are. And what we believe and what we know are, you know, footprint of technology that's effective in an airport is critical. So we think, for example, ETDs, you know, today have the best performance per square foot of any of the security technologies deployed. So we don't have to work mm -hmm. terribly hard to improve that. Throughput, which you would argue directly ties to passenger experience, mm -hmm. right? That's a big factor. And ETDs are primarily challenged there in current technology. So one of the areas that our company has very strong intellectual property on is to dramatically improve the throughput of ETDs so they can actually operate in real time in line with the existing x-ray technologies. And interestingly, that reduces the footprint even further operationally. So we've seen this before, and I mentioned it in the intro. Yeah. Uh, some people refer to it as puffers, uh, portals, mm -hmm. where you would walk through and you would get a sample. Sure. How is this um, different? How, how would it, um, from, a, from a high level um, picture of what a passenger would experience to go through your vision of where sure. Trace is headed, what would that look like? Right now, uh, I believe the industry and our company for sure are focused on the things that passengers carry, which dramatically improves their passenger experience as well. So at a checkpoint or down in the baggage hold where their check bags go, um, we believe we can greatly enhance the security performance per square foot that's that footprint equation yeah. again, and increase the throughput at the same time by building a technology based on, for example, our intellectual property for non-contact sampling. So no more need to rub. And this isn't going to be directly on the people, but on the bags that they're carrying and they might come in contact with. And we've proven that these technologies work in our laboratory. So they're not a decade out. And we've been yeah. socializing these with the stakeholders at TSA. So the new technologies can become automated, much like the x-ray imaging systems are. That's the big game changer for passenger experience. Because there's not that operational or manual interaction Correct. where you've got to touch the passenger or touch Correct. the bag, but it can be done as a automated. part of the process flow. That's right. Well, that certainly seems uh, like a very common sense uh, next step for, for trace te uh, technologies. In terms of detection, so not just looking at the uh, efficiency side of things and the throughput, mm -hmm. getting more people through the airports faster. Um, how does it enhance security? How does it make detection yeah. that much? Yeah, great more question. So, confident? so, so just because we have the best price, you know, sort of performance per square foot, doesn't mean we stop there. Because the range of threats, as we said earlier, is really expanding. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to improve our detection performance as well to, at a minimum, stay on par with our performance per square foot as the threat expands. So there we have some new detection technologies, and you hear our company is one. There are a few others that are developing mass spectrometry. It's really a very high-resolution 
very sensitive detection system that will be implemented along with the new sampling collection ideas that automate. So now you can have greater detection performance, higher throughput, and a better experience combined. And there's a very important aspect of why these two things come together at the intersection of what we understand and believe the TSA is very focused on, that is their implementation of what they call risk-based screening. Mm -hmm. When we integrate these technologies with these technology future enhancements, it really plays right into a scalable security solution for the checkpoint and for the check bag inspection. In your current role, you're the COO at yes. Implant Sciences uh, Corporation, as you mentioned. Uh, you're presumably engaged in the process of working with DHS, working with TSA right now to bring this technology uh, to the market, bring it to airports and, and implement it. Um, what are you seeing as, as a part of that process um, that will allow this technology to get into airports um, quickly? And, and what are some of the opportunities that you're seeing going forward for us to go from concept and intellectual property, as you describe it, to implementation right. and, and reduce that cycle time. Sure. Well, I think that, you know, the, the lots of things have changed in the last year. There's been sort of evolutionary changes in the technology, but there's been a lot of maturity in the, the stand-up of the DHS organization, in particular TSA. I think they're very clear on their requirements for products and innovation. I think they're really looking for innovation, at least that's what we hear and what we understand when we interact with them. And they're very, very passionate, as are we, about getting new technology into the field sooner. So, you know, we're socializing these ideas, we're showing them that we have these technologies in our laboratory today, and it's really a matter of going through the process of getting these systems evaluated and approved, ultimately, so they can be deployed. And that's our approach, so understanding the customer and applying it to the technology that we have. And we feel that things are coalescing around this new uh, emergence of threats. Well, that's about all the time that we have. Dr. Bill McGann, thank you very much for it's joining us in the studio. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I look forward to seeing more about Implant Sciences uh, Corporation. I know our members look forward to hearing more about the technology and your advances uh, with the company. Thanks for joining us for this edition of One on One. Look forward to seeing you again next time.